How's it guys? If this is the first time that you're tuning in, my name is Jared and I like to do videos on home automation with a strong focus on um, smart irrigation products. So today I'm going to do an unboxing of the Hunter X2 controller that is Wi-Fi capable. I'm going to be installing the Wi-Fi module and I'm going to give you my first thoughts and impressions. Stay tuned. Alright, here we have the Hunter X2 controller. And I like what Hunter's doing um, with their boxes. They're making it a, a lot more retail friendly. Brighter colors, giving an indication of what the, um, what the controller is capable of. Much more customer, customer centric, not just aimed at the contractor. This makes it easier to sell these items um, over e-commerce and other platforms. So big ups to Hunter for improving their, their packaging. Um, right, let's just take a quick, quick look and see what it is. Go, got a few instructions there. Right, now let's get straight into opening the box. Let's take a look and see what's inside. Obligatory instruction manual. So packaging. Let's take a look at the controller. One of the first things that I've noticed about this controller is Hunter's moved away from the bolt in lock to a padlock option. Not sure how I feel about that. Um, I don't think it's either neither here nor there. Um, I quite enjoyed the um, built-in lock. I think it worked well. Not sure why they moved away from, from that option. Let's take a look at the inside. When we take a look at the inside of the controller, one of the first things that we'll notice is that it's a very familiar layout. People that are familiar with Hunter controllers and have been using it for years, particularly customers or people that aren't used to um, technology, I think they want, they're going to like the familiarity of this. Now, um, I believe that it's got sort of hardware-wise capabilities. I haven't tried that out yet, so I think you've got the best of both worlds here. It, it appears that you'll be able to program it and set it just like you would have um, your old traditional Hunter controllers. Um, you've got sort of a dial interface, starting with date and time, start times, run times, water days, seasonal adjustment, pump, that's probably for a pump start relay or a master valve, um, manual operation and off. Everything about this feels super familiar. If you've worked with a Hunter controller in the past, you, I think you're going to enjoy this. Right, I think what we're going to do is um, we're going to plug this in and we're going to run through a couple of the features and see how, how it looks. Then we're going to put in the, the Wi-Fi module and see what it looks like from the cell phone. Right. One of the nice things is it comes, comes pre-packaged with um, a power cable, which is super nice. Um, that means for this video I don't have to connect up my own, own power cable and I can already show you how the thing operates. Um, if you've installed Hunter controllers in the past, you'll know that it doesn't come with any, any, any power connectors. Um, you have to install that all yourself. Right, okay, now we've got it switched on, powered up, and I'm gonna run through some of the features. Um, one thing that I think is really excellent, and I'm not sure how obvious it is on this video because I'm in quite a well-lit room, but the screen has a backlight. Um, this means that if your controller is installed in a dark garage, you don't have to strain your eyes to see the screen. Um, a really obvious and simple addition to the controller, but 
really nice that they've taken the time to do that. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to run through the typical setup of the controller as I would if I were to install it at a customer's house. Um, we're going to set the date and time, the run time for a station, and yeah, we're going to see how that all works. So we're going to go in a clockwise fashion, starting at, at date and time. We can see that the um, year is flashing. Um, if you were to um, want to change the year, it would be using the plus or minus buttons um, over here. Um, if you're happy with that, you're going to scroll right. After you've hit the um, right hand arrow button, then we've got the month and day flashing. Um, so at the moment, it's in July, so we've got to get it up to the seventh month. And today is the 30th, so let's just get it onto the, the 30th of July. Okay, hit the right arrow, and yeah, we've got the time. Um, at the moment, um, it's um, got a, it's very difficult to see in the picture, but there's, there's a little AM flashing over there. Um, I prefer to use a 24 hour clock, um, there's less margin for error in when, when you're doing the programming on a 24 hour clock. Um, the AM PM sounds are really really small so quite often what you can do is intend on setting it for 5 a.m. and then it ends up at 5 p.m. so to avoid that I just prefer to use a 24 hour clock. So I'm going to go ahead and set that for a 24 hour clock now. Um, I just hit the plus button there twice and now 24 hour clock is now flashing. Um, if we hit the right hand arrow again, um, the time is not flashing so I'm going to set it to the time here in South Africa at the moment which is 1836. That's pretty much it. Date and time is now set. Um, right, we're going to scroll over to start times. Um, you know, uh, there's various um, opinions on this. Some people say that you should shouldn't water at night because you're going to get mildew on your plants. Um, I believe that you know what, um, it rains at night. Um, I've never really had a had a problem with that. You can't turn off the rain. Um, I don't think it makes a massive difference whether you're irrigating at night or um, early morning. Um, I do believe that if you are irrigating at night, it's got a longer period um, soaking to the ground before um, the heat of the day where you start getting evaporation. So, um, anyway, um, that's entirely up to you. Um, when you prefer to water, um, I'm going to go for a um, five, let's just say, 10 p.m. start. Okay, then um, so what we're seeing here is program A. Um, we've got start time one, and that's at 10 o'clock. Um, if you wanted a second start time, that means that if you wanted to water it more than once a day, you would scroll over to number two, and then you could set a second second start time, third start time, fourth start time etc. Um, then you've also got the option to have different programs. So you could have program A for example starting at 10 o'clock at night and program B starting at 5 in the morning. Now the reason why you'd want to do this is perhaps you can't get all your watering done because your, your tanks or your reservoirs are running dry and you need time for them to replenish. Then you split your garden into various programs and then it would be able to allow that duration for it to, to replenish and then you can start watering. The other reason why you would have two programs is you might want to divide your garden into flower beds and grass or perhaps you would want to divide it up into shady areas and sunny areas. There's a whole bunch of reasons why you would want to use um, different programs. Um, it's essentially just a methodology in which you can divide up your garden in a logical way um, to divide up your watering times. 
Um, I'm gonna move over to, to run times now. Um, for now, I'm gonna only work on program A. Um, so I'm just gonna hit the program button again and we're gonna get back to program A. And I'm gonna set the run time for only a single station. This is Hunter's eight station um, model controller, but I don't think I need to put you through setting the run times for eight, eight different stations. One station is more than sufficient. So, um, very, very simple. Um, if you're using um, MPR nozzles, um, that's the normal old fashioned spray type nozzles and you're watering every second day. Um, typically we would be doing this for 12 minutes um, and this would give you 25 millimeters of precipitation um, over the course of a week because the recommended runtime for sprinklers in Cape Town, South Africa um, in the height of summer. Right, then moving down we, we see water days and this is really not so clear on the screen. Um, but what we've got here at the bottom is a series of sort of water droplets indicating whether the, um, the controller is watering or not on that specific day. So starting at the far left, um, it starts on a Monday and goes through to a Sunday. Um, and if you want to water, um, you can use the plus button or if you do not want it to water, um, what it, what it actually does is it, it creates a, almost a subtraction sign to replace the, the water droplets that you know that it's not going to be watering on that specific day. Um, if you prefer, if you don't want to set it for days of the week, um, there's also the option that you scroll right across and then you can select odd, odd even days. Days that's really typical of um, sort of most irrigation controllers. Um, you can then set, select an interval, um, so in other words, it can water every three days or every four days, however, however often you want it to water. Um, but yeah, let's let, 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 let's keep it keep it simple. I'm going to go with um, setting it for for even days. This means that it's going to work water on the second, the fourth, the sixth, and the eighth of um, the given month, and um, all the other even days going going forward. Essentially, meaning that the controller waters every second day, which is um, sort of a, a, a typical setting that we would set for um, irrigation in Cape Town um, for summer. Then we will go to um, seasonal adjustment. This is really, really handy. Um, instead of changing the run times for each individual station, depending on the season, you can then just adjust um, the percentages on the, on the season and adjust. And well, summer, it would be at 100%. Um, going um, springtime, we'd have it at about 80%. Autumn, 60 And winter, 30 now, these are typical settings again for, for Cape Town, South Africa. Um, the region that you stay in might differ a little bit. Um, we're in a winter rainfall climate. Um, we tend to let it water just a little bit in winter, just to keep the pipes clear, um, keep the pumps operational. We don't like to leave the pumps um, standing idle for long periods of time. It can silt up and corrode and all sorts of things. Um, so. We prefer to just let our irrigation run just for a little bit um, in winter. Um, but I, again, that would be region specific. Um, pump, okay, that's on. So that's gonna be for a, a master valve or a pump start relay. In other words, what will happen is if you've got, um, for example, a pump um, connected to your irrigation system or a master valve, as the irrigation starts, it's going to activate your pump um, together with the, the station that you've um, chosen to run. Moving over to manual. Um, so just as a, a quick um, test, um, we're going to just run station one for, for three minutes. And the reason why it's um, three minutes is because we left the seasonal adjustment at 30%. Um, if we take that right back up to 100%, um, 
um, you're going to see um, that it, it's up to the 12 minutes that we um, set originally. Now, to get it to run, um, all we're going to do is move the selector dial. Um, it's showing station one, then we move the selector dial to run, and then you'll see the little infographic over there of the little sprinkler, and now we know that station one is running. And pretty much that is um, the full functionality of the dial. Um, pretty much run through all of the major settings here. Um, the only thing really left to discuss is this little bypass switch and that's if you've got a um, sort of hunter rain click sensor or um, a little rain sensor and you want your, even though it's rain, you want your irrigation to, to operate. So you can just then set the switch to bypass and it'll bypass your rain sensor and irrigate even though um, the rain sensor is telling it not to water. Cool, let's take a look on the inside here. Um, right, so over here, um, let's take a look at the, all the terminals. Over here, we've got a sort of a remote terminal over here. Um, we've got a little pinhole over here for um, resetting the controller if there's any, any um, issues. So that's like a factory reset and you'll lose all your settings. Over here, we've got um, the sensor terminals. This is where you would attach your rain sensor. You can remove this sort of um, bridging plate that they've put, put in here um, when you attach your, um, your rain sensor. Over here is your, your common wire. MV over here is for master valve or pump. Um, and that's a 24 volt supply. So if you're wanting it to activate a pump, that would then go to um, a little relay or something like that and then the, the relay would then activate the pump and then station one to eight. Um, I really like the terminals on the, the hunter controllers. Um, they're nice and big, you can get a, a decent gauge wire um, inside there without any, any difficulty. And we've got quite a, a fair amount of space here to play with um, to accommodate all the wires that needs to go into a controller. So it would make for a really neat sort of installation. So what I'm going to do is just take a super close up of the screen um, I felt like you guys couldn't really see what I meant by um, the water days. Um, that really wasn't that clear. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and head back to, to water days over here. Um, and right in that corner you, you can then see that it's, it's even days from flashing. But if you wanted it for um, days of the week, for example, um, there we go, showing days of the week. And um, so it would be watering Monday, um, Tuesday. It wouldn't water on a Tuesday because there's a minus sign there. Um, water Wednesday. If you wanted to, if you didn't want it to water on a Thursday, you would just subtract that all. Really, really simple to do. Right, that just about concludes my unboxing of the, the X2 and my first impressions. Um, I don't think there's too much different to the previous x core um, on first appearance. I think where this is really going to separate itself from its um, predecessor is its Wi-Fi capabilities, which I'm going to review and take a look at in part two of this video. So um, if you've watched this one and enjoyed it, um, Take some time to watch the second video um, which i hope to launch pretty soon um, i'll also put a link in the description and then we can take it from there um, if you've got any questions about the x2 controller i'm always more than happy to assist um, hit me up in the comment section hit like and thank you for watching